So what happens if we integrate garbage collection to our implementation of a heap? If you recall, if you look at this, um, this memory, you will notice that there are three frames. And assuming your initial frame is E2, uh, E1 is not being used by, uh, not being referred by neither E2 nor E0. And E0 is referred to by E2, uh, and therefore E1 should be uh, garbage collected. So before and after garbage collection, you would have uh, just E2 and E0. Um, if you were to write this code and you didn't change uh, the way our implementation of heap, heap works, uh, we would get an error. And that is because um, when we uh, allocate a value in the heap, what we do is we use that counting mechanism. And I did mention before that that hash counting assumes no element is removed from the heap. If an element is removed, which is what would happen from uh, garbage collection, then we would have to we would have to uh, rethink the way we calculate unique identifiers. So let's look at what would happen uh, if after you do garbage collection, you would allocate. So in this case, we have uh, in our position two, we have a frame that assigns x to 30. So if I allocate uh, a frame uh, with some bindings, uh, let's say parent is E0 and now I assign X to 9, what happens is because the count is uh, 2, now the new identifier is going to overwrite the old, uh, which means I would lose the old identifier X assigned to 30 and now I would have this one. So you really don't want to have that. And of course, hash count is not enough. You need to have something a bit smarter. Um, so that's just a note uh, to re revisit a point that we made before. Um, another thing that you may, that I did talk about before is the idea of uh, moving versus non-moving, um, which is uh, in garbage collection. Um, the problem is when you are, if you have a, a static uh, room, where you can declare your data. And this doesn't affect our, our uh, code itself. Uh, so, or, sorry, our, because our implementation is not done in C or anything like that, we don't have this problem. But usually what you do is you implement a garbage collector on top of a language without garbage collection. Um, so therefore you, you have a fixed uh, memory location uh, and you know, if you want to collect, you want to move the, the new data somewhere. That's one way of thinking. Um, and that is known as non-moving. What you do is you allocate a new region and you copy all the marked elements and you move, copy them to the new uh, region. Um, that is nice. You don't have to touch the references. Alternatively, but that uh, uses a lot of memory, right? You always need to duplicate your memory before you move the objects from one location to the next uh, another pro another solution is well maybe you could try to do like a dynamic programming kind of algorithm where while you're moving things around wh while you're checking if something is unused you would rewrite uh, your pointers to kind of um, point to new locations why because as you collect elements if you think about a fixed grid you would have holes right so you would like to move those elements compact the memory somehow. And if you do that, now your references need to to be changed. So you would have to go backwards and kind of reconnect things. Um, so that's the idea where you, you, a garbage collector will move references around and place them in different locations to avoid fragmentation. Uh, that is uh, known as a moving garbage collection, collection algorithm. Uh, okay. So uh, let's dive into a bit of homework six. Uh, in homework six, you are given uh, three exercises. Uh, sorry, you're given an exercise where you have uh, frame refs, uh, mem mark, and mem sweep. You have to implement all these three. So frame refs, given a frame, returns the set of handles that c there are contained in the frame. Okay, so I'll give you an example. So here, 
is an example. You have a frame uh, which tells you the parent uh, and then all the closures. The idea is that you have to go through all the frames, sorry, all the binders, and you see if it's a closure, you return that value. You return the parent, sorry, you return the environment. Um, so for every closure, you have to return that that is in the set of refs thing, uh, plus the parent. So the reference in the frame, so this is a frame, are all the handles you can see in them. That is the a very quick way of seeing it. So in this case, it would be a set that contains E2, E0, and E1. So E0, E1, and E2, uh, whereas frame refs of a parent, for in this case, uh, there's only E0 and E1, so that's why you have 0 and 1. So you do have to think about the case where the parent uh, is false, uh, where which means you don't have a parent. Um, you will be using uh, hash, uh, sorry, sets, which require this end part that will be included in your thing. The idea is you have, you have a constructor that is very similar to hash set, but now you just have values. Uh, as you might know, you've used sets uh, indirectly in homework three, uh, but I'm showing you again, you have the set builder, gives you values. So, so it's not, you're not gonna be using promises or those infinite sets. What we're interested here is really the standard library on finite sets. So you can create them with calling function set that will initialize it with, in this case, three values or one value, whatever. If you just call set with close parentheses, it will be an empty set. Uh, you can do set union. You can add an element to the set with set add that returns a new set. None of these are immutable, by the way. You have sub set subtraction where you want to take out all the elements of S2 and S1. Uh, and you're going to need, you might also need a set member checks if the value is in the set. And there's also the utility function converts a set into a list. Um, so you might wonder how you iterate over all values of a frame. Um, it's highly recommended that you go through the util file so that you go through all the, the things that might be needed. There's a frame fold and a, fa a frame values function. Look at those, uh, try to play around with it, look at the tests to see how they are used. Uh, that will be useful for this, uh, for this homework. Uh, now let's look at mark uh, and sweep. So how do you specify sweep? Uh, the input is going to be a heap and um, a set of handles. Um, the idea is, you know, you want to remove, you've already marked uh, and the set of handles is all the handles that are going to be kept. Uh, so that's this set of handles here. And uh, the functional pattern is, of course, filter, right? Because you want to keep all the, the marked uh, elements and you want to remove all the ones that are not in this set. So typically you want to use a, a filter and there is a function called heap filter. So look into that. Again, look at the util uh, module. Um, so what are we keeping? All the handles that are in this set, in the input set. Uh, and that's basically it. That's what the sweep is doing. The mark, the mark, uh, two, 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 this is refs. Ah, the mark, this is the specification of my, I guess I, I jumped one. Uh, but the mark function is, uh, you can think of it as uh, a recurse. Basically, you want to go through, you have an initial value and you want to iterate all the frames uh, according to the, um, according to all the um, parent and all the value variables, sorry. Jesus, I'm... <laughs> so basically, if you are visiting a frame like this, you want to use frame refs to get you the next positions. Uh, so f uh, in this frame, what are the, the next possible places where you... or the links, right? So the idea is you imagine uh, your memory as a graph, right? And the connections to the next node, so each node is a frame, and the connections to the next node is given by frame refs. So if I give, in this case, the frame is connected to E2, E0, and E1, okay? And the only thing you have to consider is the case where you're, you have a, you've already visited something. Basically, if, if um, a handle has been already visited, you shouldn't visit it again. 
and you need two sets. You need to know a set of things you've already visited and the things you need to visit still. Uh, and basically, it's it's going through that those elements. Uh, you're you're navigating until your set or list of elements to visit uh, is empty. When that's empty, you're done. Otherwise, you take one element and you you get the 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 refs. You use the refs to get the next uh, things to visit. So that's um, that is Mark. Uh, we lo looked at sweep as well. Sweep is after. And we looked at refs as well. How do you compute refs? Uh, so that's basically it. You 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 should be ready to solve this exercise in homework six. Um, and that is basically it for today. I hope you had fun. Um, yeah.